Since 1973, Tattoo Charlie's has been an established body modification studio in Kentucky. Featuring world-renowned artists and piercers, currently with locations on Preston Highway and in Lexington. A staple point in the tattoo community. Learn more at TattooCharlie's.com. Set up your appointment today at 7904 Preston Highway. Our tattoos are done while you wait. Musicians rejoice. Confused with all the modern and technical pedal board selections? Look no further. Kentucky Hot Brown Pedal Boards offer their homemade wooden and custom pedal boards for guitarist and bassist alike. Established in 2013, KYHBPB has helped support not only the local Louisville scene, but a large array of big and small players from across the entire country. More info can be found at KentuckyPedalBoards.com. Hey guys, Wesling Steve of the Wesling Steve Show here. Uh, so if you're currently listening to the Metal Forge with Mark Jackson, then you understand that Mark Jackson has a pretty discerning taste when it comes to music as a whole. You also understand that he has a discerning taste for professional wrestling, just like me. The, my show is called The Wrestling Steve Show. Uh, I talk about modern and classic pro wrestling in a completely unbiased, unfiltered way. Be sure to check me out on all available podcasting platforms. That is The Wrestling Steve Show. And I am the host, Wrestling Steve. Just remember, uh, like, like Confucius said, uh, man who goes through turnstile in Thailand uh, is going to Bangkok. Pro wrestling. Thank you for tuning in to the Metal Forge. I am Mark Jackson, and I am your host. The premise of the show is pretty simple. Awesome interviews and awesome music. If you want to contact me, hit me up at MetalForgeRadio at gmail.com or visit the website, MetalForgeRadio.com. And now, let's get this show on the road. What's going on, Metalheads? It's the Metal Forge, Friday, August the 21st, high noon. I'm your host, Mark Jackson. Thank you all for tuning in today. Hope you all are having a safe Friday. Uh, I sure as hell am. Looking forward to vacation here in a couple weeks, going to Chesapeake Bay, Virginia, and Virginia Beach. Uh, practicing social distancing, of course, you know. Uh, not going to be getting too close to people. But hey, you know, you got to do what you got to do, right? So I had a little bit of a scheduling conflict come up. And instead of bringing on the guy who was supposed to be here because he had something come up, I'm bringing in Kurt today. They're from Lexington, Kentucky, and they're a black death metal band uh, with an EP out and soon to have an album out. So... Yeah, I'm interested in talking to those guys. We played a show together a while back, probably in like 2017, uh, something like that, at the Tiger Room in Louisville, Kentucky with DRI and Caustic. It was a fucking killer time, and I've been checking back periodically on those guys and saying, hey, when are you guys going to have an album out? When are y'all going to come up back up to Louisville to play? And thankfully, you know, they're fucking coming out with an album here soon. Hell yeah, I'm digging it. I do want to talk about something really fast. Last week, I kind of bashed on Metallica quite a bit, and it was about the drive-in theater experience show. While I do not agree with that concept, I understand they're just out there for the fans and doing something so people can see them in a shitty time where we can't see bands. Do I agree with the concept behind it? Yes. Do I agree with the execution? Not entirely. I think it's way too expensive, even though it is a car full of six people and you get four downloads of S&M 2. I do applaud them for what they're trying to do. On another note... Look up the loaded Spotify playlist. This is me and my friend Sam. We sat down Saturday night and we're like, you know, Load and Reload would have been a better album set if they would have just dumped all the bullshit. And I know a lot of you are going to say, well, they're all bullshit. Yeah, I get that. But there's a lot of shit on there, but there's some good songs. So, you know, keeping positive with that, look up the loaded playlist from the Metal Forge on Spotify, and hell yeah, I hope you all dig it. Uh, the United Kingdom actually started doing a 
social, they opened up a venue that had a social distanced concert, a, a legitimate one, not this bullshit like Sturgis where everybody was standing up fucking to see fucking Smash Mouth and people like what they like, you know, like I said, I just admitted to liking load and reload, but none of that bullshit. They actually took risers and and cordoned people off in groups of five, you know, your party of people that you were coming with. It looks pretty cool. And I know there's a, a meme floating around where it's like, if you're expecting concerts to do this, expect me to do this. And it's like fucking Steve Austin on the ropes. Cool. I get that. You know, it's all about being safe and being able to do the things we used to do, like going to shows and seeing people perform because it all sucks out there. Looking up the metal injection, um, site on this i'm going to post a link for it in the description so scroll down while you're listening to this and check that out along with the other links that are down there check them out you know follow Kerr, follow the metal forge any, any chance you get what are your thoughts on it send me some messages i'll look at them and we can talk about it again next week hey and if you even want to call in and talk about it shoot me a line we'll work something out you know like i keep saying we're all in this together and it, all, and it takes all of us to get this shit worked out doing our parts each individually along as a as a group. I just hope you all stay safe and healthy and think about your brothers and sisters and parents and kids and all your all of the people that you need to think about because hey, no sense on causing undue stress on people. That's, you know, I've tried to become a better person in doing stuff uh doing stuff better with that. So, but anyways, you know, fuck it. Let's get into some Kerr here. Um, again, from Lexington, Kentucky, Kerr, this is the title track off of the EP from 2017. This is Drowning the King's Air.
All right, and I'm being joined on the line from the guys from Kerr in Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, seems to be a hot spot these days where I've been. Uh, I've got a, quite a few bands that have called in from Lexington. Uh, so it's an awesome musical town at this point. Guys, how are you doing? Doing all right, man. Hell yeah. Glad you guys called in. Uh, played shows with you, at least one show with you guys before with DRI back in the day. Hell yeah. That was a crazy show, man, because my dad showed up. Wow. Really? Yeah. Yeah. No. He, so the he wasn't thing... in DRI, was he? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Now, the funniest thing about that show, when we got booked for it, I told my dad, and he lost his shit because his band opened up for DRI back in 84. Holy shit. Really? Yeah. Dude, see, that's killer. You know, it's like one of those, it's like legacy stuff. You know, that's so cool. Yeah, dude, um, it was an awesome moment. The only thing that I can remember from that show is having to work the next day. Oh, and damn. Th- they played literally 90 minutes. And I swear to God, they played at least 65 songs. Because, Sounds about right, man. <laughs> yeah, because everything's like a minute and a half. Yeah. You know, and it was just so, it was they. It was like they started and it went on and on. And I love the band, don't get me wrong, but it was just like, oh my gosh. This is like four sets in a bar at one time. <laughs> yeah. So, but it, uh, awesome show. Uh, so, uh, who do I got on the line here? Because you're a three-piece band, and I think we've got all three three of you guys here, right? Yep. Uh, I'm, I'm Osiel, uh, vocalist and guitars. Uh, Polyon, drums. Ophiuch is guitar. Nice. So tell everybody out there about Kerr. Like, how did you guys start? What did What was the genesis of Kerr? <laughs> I, uh, forever ago, I got really, really fed up with um, all of my musical endeavors not doing anything. I just sat at home, started writing my own music, and kept trying to recruit people, find a full band to play live we played one show with a different lineup and that was we won't talk about that <laughs> but um i think around yeah the 2016 era i got a poly on and we've made it work ever since right on and you guys are a black and death metal uh occult band yeah very, very satan You know, I think most good metal music is, you know, <laughs> so that, that works. So obviously, because I've got all of you guys on the line, you're in the same room right now. Uh, you're not like some of these other bands out today where, you know, you have a member that lives 150 miles or a thousand miles away. Yeah. Well, we, we couldn't make it work if that were the case. We have to be in person. There's something about it. Makes the practices more just... Thank you. Definitely. More big so it's one of those things where it's like, you know, you couldn't, you couldn't, uh, jam with somebody half the country away because it's not, it's, it's, there's a personability to it, I guess. Yeah, exactly. You got, there's just more feeling when you're there as opposed to being like, you know, videoing from hundred miles away or thousand miles away, whatever have you. Definitely. And I think that's I think that's something that definitely helps feed into our live performance because we when we're on stage we get kind of wild and like to rock out and I think it's because we practice in person and we get used to each other and we know our mannerisms and we're like all right another another gig fuck it let's go you know right so you you kind of feed off of those uh, those cues the of body language definitely yeah that. And see, that's awesome because I think that a lot of, I think that's a, a level of professionality that I think is missed in a lot of, a lot of bands today because there are so many bands that with the advent of the internet where you don't necessarily have to have, you don't have to be in the same city or any, or state even to, to be in a band. And then typically those albums also sound more produced as well. Yes. And not all. There's almost a difference in, you know, there's, it's not as organic sounding, I guess. 
Yeah, definitely. And if they can make that work, you know, more power to them. But it's definitely beneficial for us to be living in the same city and get yeah, together sure. on a win. Uh, I agree, you know, a hundred percent. And there are some people that I've had even on the show that it, it does work for them. And I, you know, and I love those bands as well. Um, not mentioning names or anything, but it's, um, it, it, it is definitely an interesting thing because I've always been, uh, the type of musician that has to have an in-person connection as well. I, I've always wanted to try the other, but I've just like, I don't know. Do I have the, for one, is it the technical know-how on the gear to do it or, uh, yeah. or is it like, I think for me personally, it's the, um, I can't bullshit the guys in the same room with me. Like I could bullshit myself <laughs> if I'm just sitting yeah. in front of a monitor. I mean, that's part of the chemistry of the band. You know, you have to be able to hang out and bullshit and you know, it's helps build the band as a unit, I think. Definitely. There's a, there's a certain type, uh, certain mix of camaraderie there that I think everybody needs to have. Sure. So you do have an EP out drowning the King's air. Um, what else do you have any other albums out or coming out or anything? We are working on an album, a uh, whole full length. Um, it's taken us a minute just cause it's, it's hard to balance all the work and finding the studio time and, but I mean, it's, it's recorded. We just got to touch up some stuff, get it mastered, press, press. Are you going with anybody of note to have any kind of mastering done? Uh, we're going with, um, Jason Groves over at Sneak Attack here in Lexington. Okay. Nate's Pretty kind good. of been thrown out here before. So definitely. He's awesome, man. He, uh, shit, he does everything, man. Yeah. Right on. So what kind of media is it going to get put out on? Are you, uh, Digital, of course, because that's the state of music these days. CD, probably. Is it going to come out? Are you going to do like some awesome like vinyl release and cassette release? Because that seems to be a hot thing these days. We tossed around the idea of maybe putting two or three songs on it on vinyl and maybe like one song on the vinyl that's not actually on the record as well. Just as kind of like a bonus track. Right on. Kind of get more incentive out there. Yeah. But, I mean, what really boils down to it is what can we do with the budget we've got kind of deal. Yeah. Absolutely, because vinyl's expensive. Hell yeah. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> so uh, so you were possibly looking at a 7-inch, but, do, again, it's due to financial. Yeah, uh, definitely. Right on. I mean, hell, that's why we don't have any merch right now. We, we sold out of it quick yeah. as hell, and then we're like, oh, shit, we're too broke to get more real quick. Understandable. Merch did we sold originally it's not going to be reprinted. So whoever got those original shirts and stickers and stuff like those are the only ones that are going to be out there. The new album's going to have all new art. We've got a new logo. Everything's going to be coming out with the record. Nice. Really? Yeah. We're pretty excited to kind of drop that bomb. You know, that's always something interesting that I've, you know, I've always liked about some bands out there that will, keep the same idea like logo based uh, but change the logo to match the album you know where yeah, it's the same base concept the same shape or something but it's it's just twi it's just tweaked just a little bit like it might look like it's raised up or it might be look like it's uh, carved into something or so on and so forth i've always thought that was a pretty cool thing it's just not just a it's your brand it's not just a name on a on a sleeve yeah we'll just say that it is evolved so to speak yeah and evolution is always is always awesome when it comes to stuff like that into the writing process um with i know like i said we you know you've got the ep you're working on the album putting its fi uh, final finishing touches on there you all get together to write and record everything which is awesome but if there's a song or an album from somebody else that you would have loved to have said that you would have loved to have written, what would it be? Oh, shit. For me, Apollyon, for me, <laughs> the drums, I think that I would have loved to have been a part of Crystal Mountain by Death. I don't know. I love that song. Yeah. Good stuff. Definitely. I could, I could definitely see that. Oh, man. What about you guys? I don't know. <laughs> I know it's a bit, it's a, when you, every song that you ever like goes through your head in this one moment. I mean, that's a huge list, but if I could pick one of the many, like I would choose uh, Belford Wars Test Apocalypse. Oh, man. Because it stands out. It's, it's really heavy and just a brutal assault. Nice. Ex execution. Yeah. <laughs> I, 
I think I'm going to go with uh, Behemoth, uh, The Apostasy. And so, I always go back to that album all the time, man. So good. Right on. So really heavy stuff for the most part. Uh, it's always surprising when I get somebody say, like, Molly Hatchet or something, and they're in a really heavy <laughs> band. So right on. Right. I, You know, and I think that's I think that's a test to, you know, with, you know, having a few different people on, on the line like this is it it's kind of a reference a site reference for you know this is what they would have loved to have written so you might be interested if you're interested in those bands you'd be interested in Kerr correct yeah definitely see i know what's going on <laughs> <laughs> so why music for you guys oh, man for me i don't know I'm, when i was younger apparently i just always was banging like taking spoons and beating on stuff and my brother told my mom he was like you need to get him a drum set which my brother played guitar but he was all into the 80s hair metal and stuff at that time and was a big big guy into that whole scene but he's older than me as well so i guess you're a product of your generation in that aspect right it wasn't because he was scouting a new drummer no and then <laughs> well i mean i did play i did end up forming a band with my brother a long time ago called the naughty boys which was <laughs> it sounded like a cross between motley crew and iron maiden but like for me, Iron Maiden, once I seen the video for Run to the Hills, I seen Nico's drum set. I was like, yeah, this is this is what I got to do. So. Definitely, because Nico is one of those drummers that's like, he is such a pocket drummer when he needs to be, but there is still so much flash in his pocket playing. Oh, yeah. And he sits all weird behind the drum set. So that's all cool too. <laughs> Almost standing. Yeah, definitely. So what about what about the other guys here? Why why music for you guys? What it what made you all want to be musicians? I I was pretty much destined for it, man. Uh, both my grandfathers play guitar. Um, I think think my mom's dad. I never met him, but I think he actually played in a jazz band around town before he passed away. And then my my dad, my old man, who actually um, has a studio in his basement and has been recording us, and he's the mastermind behind the album. He's been playing punk rock since I was born. He's one of the oldest punk rockers in Lexington right now, running around playing in bands and shit. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. I, I I had the curse. I was given a guitar, and then I oh, shit. I took off. And so he's the one that came to the show. Yeah. Um. So is this a? And we're talking about legacy with that. Is this one of those things where everybody knows that? Hey, that's that's my dad, or or anything. That is it. Like a can't let the legacy down kind of thing. Well, uh, people who know my dad know what's going on, but uh, my dad looks really, really young for as old as he is. And since my dad and I are super close, a lot of people will think that we're gay lovers. <laughs> <laughs> not, man. Dude, there was one time my dad and I were at the Humane Society looking at cats, you know, the gayest thing you could do. And, uh, there's nothing wrong with looking at cats. Yeah, nothing wrong with everybody. No. Loves <laughs> but I mean, we're sitting there looking at these cats and we're like, oh, who's going to be? great at home who's gonna love all the other animals and this chick was like i don't mean to pry but how long have you all been together <laughs> and my dad and i were like are you fucking serious and it's happened multiple times after that first moment no <laughs> like, holy shit all right since i was born yeah yeah <laughs> oh dude yeah no my dad freaked that girl out she was like i've had him all his life and she was like fucking what <laughs> oh wow <laughs> <laughs> I got him from his mom. Oh, wow. That's that's hardcore. <laughs> oh, put a fork in it. I think we're done after that. No, no, no. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wrap it up. <laughs> Roll them uh, up, kids. Uh, <laughs> I'll say for, get, for getting into music for me, man, like I kind of got the same background as they were talking about. Uh, I had family members who listen to classic rock and traditional heavy metal. Uh, I grew up skateboarding. Knew a lot of people that were into punk rock and, and metal of different genres, and I picked up the guitar just just to try it out, man. And I started playing the Misfits and Slayer and Old Metallica. I started branching off into uh, more extreme sides of metal, you know, death metal, black metal, and a few types of thrash. Started writing my own music, and then several different bands, side projects, what have you. And got together with these guys and jammed, and it clicked, man. We all listen to the same types of music, the same uh, influences, and shit. Decided to stick it out with them, been blast. Right on. It seems like in Lexington, there is a big, prominent punk scene and really, 
really heavy scene. Would that be correct in saying? For sure. Yeah. And the big punk scene um, here in Lexington is super awesome because it's... Because um, you it get derived, a lot of crossover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get a lot of that crossover, but then you get a lot of like the old punk rockers from the 80s that still come out and rock harder than some of these kids, man. And it's fucking awesome. Seemed like there's been like an explosion of like doom metal around this area as well and like the surrounding cities and counties yeah shout out to uh i want to give a shout out to the uh storm toker with the doom there oh uh, hell yeah man. i love those dudes they're they're so awesome <laughs> what inspires you to write music this crazy fucking world man i was gonna say definitely right? yeah no we um dude the, the band is definitely therapeutic for all of us i mean it's we write about our frustrations we we're pissed off about something or like just the world sucks and we'll write about that. We'll, um, but you know, we'll do it all metaphorical and poetry like, so it's kind of cool. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, no, essentially we'll just take our frustrations and we get it out through the music. Yeah, very. We'd be having like the worst day ever and then go play and it sounded better immediately. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Right. And everything that we write about is, uh, it's based on the music that we come up with. So we write like the music of the song first and then we go, all right, what does this song sound like? Sounds like you're punching babies. All right, let's write about punching babies. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's kind of the idea and the feel and the mood of the music that we came up with that day based on what we're motivated by that day, you know? What is the point you want to get across? You know, exactly. what, what, you know, if you want to sing about being outraged over the government, you write a song about it. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what um, Drowning the King's Air is about. You know, we are like just everything sucks. Everyone's fucking stupid. So let's overthrow the government. And so it's kind of what we're writing about in that. All right. I'm going to take a quick break here really fast if y'all don't mind. Hey, everybody. Thank you for tuning into the Metal Forge this week. I really appreciate every last one of you that listens. But before I go any further, I do want to tell you that we do have a Patreon page here. And there's three tiers. There's the Dion and $30 tier. It's just a buck. Hey, you're not going to miss a buck. Nobody does. Then there's the $5 Showstoppers tier, which you get a patch, stickers, whatever we have that's in that price range. And then there's the $20 a month Master, where you can get a t-shirt, any size, any color of the Metal Forge logo. Fuck yeah. That's awesome stuff. Oh, and by the way, if you donate on there, guess what? You get the show two days in advance from everybody else. Thank you all so much. It's patreon.com slash radio. Check it out and donate today. I love you guys. Thank you. Do you listen to yourselves musically as to get away from the, to get away from the critique factor? Can you just pop in the, the EP and just listen to it? Uh, I do sometimes. Uh, I always hate it though. Cause I'm just kind of perfect. Yeah. yeah. Critiquing. Yeah, so- I'm always. And I'm like, that that one note fucking sucks. Or, you know. Right. So it's a little bit harder to get away from, you know, pinpointing what you would what you would have changed. Yeah, no, definitely. For me, like, I'll be in my girlfriend's car and we'll be going somewhere and I'm just like curves on her Spotify playlist and then start playing and I'll be like, Oh, God, I hate this band. They suck. <laughs> You're like, Okay, Google, next song. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully nobody uh listening to this just got the track switched off. <laughs> <laughs> better not <laughs> right that would suck <laughs> so i'm not too familiar with your background of playing shows you know going you know, on any kind of tours uh where you've all played i know like i said we played at the tiger room together with dri back in like 20 27 18 2017 it's been a while it's been a minute um was, i know it was before they had switched the stages over um we played on the bar side um, do you have a favorite place you like to play at or perform at city or venue? Man, for me, like what well, we played metal Monday twice, or have we only played metal Monday once and then crashed it after the aborted show? I think that's what we did. So for me, honestly, it's going to be like, of course, like bigger venues are better to play because you got bigger sound systems, more room on the stage, stuff like that. But man, Highlands tap room and Louisville has been like awesome every time we've been there there's like a ton of people it's packed everybody's going oh, yeah. ape shit and dude. they're right there in your face and that just feeds so much more into like the way you play right oh, dude. yeah i love it it sucks sometimes when you have like that cable between your guitar and your amp because i just want to run into the crowd and like shove people while i'm playing and like almost destroyed my amp once because i jumped off stage and started shoving people in the pit and 
almost ripped my amp off my cab. Off the cab. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that place for being as small as it as it is could really pack in so many people. It definitely not fit in the uh the social distancing rules these days. <laughs> nah. Nah. <laughs> I'm sure even before this whole mess, there was probably like some fire code getting broken. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if anybody who listens has ever uh, been there, you know what we're talking about. If you haven't been there, it's one of those things. If you were to base it off of social distancing rules, you could probably still only fit one person in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with, with being properly distanced. <laughs> no, it's not that small, but it is tiny, but it's such, packs such a punch to play there. And it's one of those places where everybody's in your face. So I get that. Yeah. Any, yeah it's does one of the worst work? What's going on right now is that there's no shows at all, man. Oh, yeah. We've all been right. dying for it. Speaking on the show aspect of things, because it's always about performance uh, along with, you know, the the audio recording and, and putting out albums. I always love watching live shows and stuff like that, especially from stuff that I'm not, from eras that I was not alive in. You know, I was pre, pre being born or shows where I was too, way too young to go. So if there is a show that is out there that you guys would have loved to have played, what would it be? Oh, damn it, man. That's a hard question. That's a question. really yeah. hard question. Uh, I literally just thought of like all kinds of shows. <laughs> right. Probably easier to say which shows I wouldn't want to have played. I don't know, man. It's just playing shows is one of the best things ever. I mean, at the end of the day, I really don't care who I'm playing with. Just as long as I'm playing music, I'm having a good time doing it, you know? Right. I mean, there are definitely those moments in those bands that you play with, and you're like, holy fuck, I'm playing with this band, man. It's like, um, when we opened up for um, Soulfly and Nile, man, I lost my shit at that show. Yeah, that was a great time. It was awesome. We got to hang out with Nile <laughs> after the show and everything. And I, I grew up listening to Nile in my teens and everything. I mean, yeah, no, like after the show, like sitting and talking to George Collius at the bar and yeah, just talking about drums and being a kid. Yeah, for like ever. That was awesome. I mean, like you know, and, and we played with other bands that are nothing like us. Like, there's no comparison. There, you know, there's some cheesy pop punk band, and then we go on next, going, "All right, hope you're done hearing the words." <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I mean, I think even when we played together, it was one of those things where you know we're kind of more thrash based style, and you guys are more of like a death based. Style, so we're complete. You know, not far from from each other, but far enough apart where it's two different things. When I think yeah. that's cool, and it was Absolutely. still a fucking awesome show. You know, hell yeah. I, you know, I think it's better to have those kind of eclectic shows. You got that mixture of everyone everywhere to bring in a big crowd and expose people. You know, I yes. think that's why I like playing festivals so much. Is because there's just so much going on and all these different stages and different sounds going on. Like yeah. I like look shows, you know, more intimate settings and so forth, but I don't know, festivals. Yeah, no, festivals are awesome. Like I'd love to play Hellfest one year. Right on. Or or like every year, you know, for that matter. Yeah. Shout out to Hellfest if you hear this Booker. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Ooh, Ooh. definitely. I oh, holy group, right? What is it? Like the metal, metal Holy Grail, man. Oh, yeah. Definitely love to have played Walking as well. All right. we're, we're definitely trying to shoot for the stars with this band. <laughs> well, definitely. I mean, because why not? That's how we. That's what we feel about it, you know? Well, I mean, why not? We're going to do it for fun. Why not just do it for career, you know? Right. And as much as I hate the saying of uh, you only live once because of the, the culture that it, it spawned a couple of years ago. Yeah. But it is the truth, as far as we know. And yeah, so why not do everything in your ability that you're able to do? Oh, for sure. Hell yeah, man. So I like to ask some general questions as well. You know, all right. Because I always preface this as we're all people. We're all striving toward a common goal, whether playing music, promoting music, enjoying music, and life. Because we're all in it together. So I like to ask some general questions of of, of you guys. All right, I'm digging. Do y'all have a favorite film, either collectively or individually? Uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> any, I love Star Wars, so, you know, I'm kind of nerd out on that you stuff. You like The Last Jedi, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like the original, you know, four, five, and six better than one, two, and three. But you know, if it if it's Star Wars, you know, I'm down. 
I, I'll, I'll I get it. I, I'm that way too. I get that. I mean, I don't have a problem with all nine films. I have problems with some of them, but yeah, I get you, dude. Yeah. Hell yeah. Man, the, the favorites, like what's your favorite anything is always the hardest questions for me. I yeah. get it because it's hard to pinpoint a favorite. Like somebody goes, yeah. well, what's your favorite Black Sabbath song? I can tell you my favorite album, but I'm not going to be able to tell you a favorite song. <laughs> yeah. uh, all of them. Right. I don't know, man. Or, okay, so instead of saying favorite, what is the, what could I sit here and say is what is the one film that you would constantly come back to that you could watch without end over and over and over and tirelessly? Super Troopers. <laughs> <laughs> the first one. The first right, one, yeah. right, right, right. <laughs> All right, now. All right, yeah. I don't know, man. You got a liter of cola. Man, we're going to sing. The one I, I will always go back to and, like, watch – no matter what, and it's got to be like those that, that Lord of the Rings trilogy, man. Because nice. I always like to, because uh, I'm a huge fucking nerd, man. So I'll like halfway through the movie, buzzed on something, I'm bust out a foam sword and like move the coffee table over, and I'm I'm in that movie, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Fighting orcs and shit. Yeah, dude, did that shit when I was a kid, and I do it now as an adult. No shame. No, no. Uh, <laughs> so you said bust out a foam sword. I assume you you LARP then, or did LARP? Pre, uh, no, no. no it's just, those <laughs> man. just because it looked cool. Never, right? never took it that far. Never went that far, but I mean, if, I, if I had to pick one, one movie that's really always stuck with me is Dark City. Like, I've always liked those kind of real cerebral thriller movies. I mean, you know, there's definitely a lot of parables for society, right? Yeah, it's, it's some heavy shit. That's a good movie. <laughs> I'm not seeing it. movies like that and I mean, They well, Live. That's that's yeah. kind of what I gravitate towards. Yeah, shout out to uh, They Live. That got brought up on last week's episode, too. Oh, yeah. Well, shit, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Something that everyone needs to see, for sure. There's there's a lot of uh, important just important things in that film. Yeah, yeah. Just put on the glasses, man. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, I've not seen Dark City, so I am writing that down. Highly recommended. So I actually can check that out. And if you can end on Dark City, try to watch the director's cut. I think it's much better. Right on. Do you guys have a favorite food? Dude, I'm like Garfield, man. Fucking lasagna for me. Pizza and burgers. Yeah. Nice. Do you have a particular, speaking of the lasagna, I mean, is it like a, a nice meaty lasagna? Is it uh, maybe like a like a more vegetarian style lasagna type thing? How do you like dude, it? Dude, I'm all about the veggies, but I'm definitely a carnivore. Nah, so I could I could relate, I'm dude. Carnivore. I'll eat just about anything. <laughs> and what about the burgers and pizza? Any particular method of the madness there? Big, juicy, double, fucking bacon, jalapeno, pepper jack, barbecue sauce, whatever. Oh, uh, yeah. Gut busters, man. Hell, uh, yeah. Makes myself hungry. <laughs> Spoken like right true up. metalheads, yes. Fuck <laughs> it, it's spicy, man. If you make that burger spicy, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. Definitely. Healthy sandwich. Yeah, dude. And what was the other one? Uh, what other one? Yeah, what's your favorite? Yeah, what's your uh, favorite? I'm on burgers, team burgers as well. <laughs> team burgers. Team oh, burgers. Team burgers. <laughs> Motion you carries. You can eat kind of food, but there's something magical about a burger. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. The way you said it, it made me think, hmm, that is a tasty burger. <laughs> <laughs> These cheese burgers, man. <laughs> you know, <laughs> what kind? <laughs> you know what I mean, though, man? Like, you can eat some of the most fancy gourmet food, and that shit's good as hell. Nothing hits just like a greasy ass burger. Oh, I get it. Sometimes you need the greasy burger. Though. Sometimes you just need it. Greasy. Beers. Uh, <laughs> yep, I yep. will attest to this. Yep. The <laughs> greasiest burger I ever ate was at Parquet Diner in Lexington. <laughs> No shit. Greasiest burger I ever ate. I don't think that was my accident either. No. No, no, it really wasn't. I think they deep fried the burger. <laughs> it's, wow. it's possible. Dude, they deep fried everything. <laughs> Even the ice cream. No. <laughs> yeah. Or anything, we could pickle that instead. It's like, we could fry that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> do you have an ultimate jam? Man, Honestly, for me, like, I used to always, granted, we haven't got to play any shows here lately, but I always would listen to, uh, On the Highway, Buying Flames before a show. Then take a couple shots of tequila. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ritualistically, we yeah. take shots of tequila before we get on stage. Uh, damn, I guess for me, man. Hell, maybe. Oh, dude, yeah. We always listen to Always listen to LA, yeah. man. Have you ever oh, heard of them? No. Ah, uh, dude. Whatever you said. Yeah, whatever. Metal stuff. Dude, they mix um, Celtic folk music with death metal. 
So you got like the double kicks and the harsh growling, and then you got some like fucking flute going on. Flute and, and mandolin. Things, man. It's awesome. Man. Right on. Why have I never heard of this? Oh, sorry. <laughs> you got to check them out, especially their latest album. Their latest album is fucking insane. Definitely. That's the problem with the modern era. There's way too many good bands for one lifetime. Yeah. yeah. Right. I get it. Believe me. That's how I find most, you know, most of the people that I have on the show are from, you know, like band camp shares. And right. like, I'll, I'll find a band and I'll be like, yeah, they're fucking awesome. And then I'll go through similar artists or, you know, just that genre. And I'll find out so many other fucking cool bands. I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is right. fucking ridiculous. Yeah. And hell yeah, I totally get it. Shit, if I had to pick one, man, uh, it's a band from Sweden in the mid '90s called Mipitin. Like, uh, oh yeah, I've heard. That. I mean, Viking metal, not in the sense of like what most people would think about, like a monomar. It's it's traditional black metal mixed with uh, Nordic folk music, but it's real, real dark and gritty, man. But their their album. King of the Distant Forests, and of course, there are the promos and the demos. Just something I can always go back to. It doesn't matter what kind of a mood I'm in. You know, if one day I want to listen to more thrash, one day more black metal, or another day even classical. Any of those days, I go back to that. Day. That's you know, eclectic taste and stuff like that. I think is you know where it's at being a musician because it's part of uh, the funneling process. You you did mention something a second ago, and I'm going to kind of riff on this here for a second. About, you know, listening to the In Flame song and taking a couple of shots of tequila where it being ri- ritualistic. Do you have any other kind of, does anybody else in the band have any kind of ritualistic thing that they do before a show? Four chickens and a, and a, and a Coke kind of ritualistic stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, as a, uh, the band as a whole, right before we go on stage, like, We've got the gear set up. We're about to play. We all take one tequila shot. That's that's kind of our good luck charm, man. Get a little bit of that liquid courage in us, loosen us up, ready to go. Because we usually don't yeah, drink no. before we play. Yeah, no. Right. We always want to put on a really solid show, so we try to be as sober as we can. But there's always that shot of tequila right before we play. I don't even know when that started happening. We just all of a sudden were like, yeah, just all of a sudden it picked it up. And it was like by the third time we did it, I was like, I guess this is a ritual now. Yeah. So, well, because the times that we hadn't done it, it was a shitty show. <laughs> <laughs> you did you did it once and it was an awesome show. You didn't do it and it was a shitty show and you're like, we, fuck, we got to go back to doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got, we got to go. Uh, but I mean, like some other things, man, like every show, I always do these like breathing and vocal exercises to make sure that my voice is stretched there. And yeah, stretches, got to make sure you stretch all of this shit, man. Right. Because if you don't, you know, it's one of those, it's, you don't want to, you know, roast your vocal cords or, or fucking pull a hammy or nothing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> I, I agree, you know, and we're only getting older, right? <laughs> oh. Sure, I know. <laughs> All right, and I'm going to take a real short break here really fast. Hey, guys. Wrestling Steve of the Wrestling Steve Show here. Uh, so if you're currently listening to the Metal Forge with Mark Jackson, then you understand that Mark Jackson has a pretty discerning taste when it comes to music as a whole. You also understand that he has a discerning taste for professional wrestling, just like me. The, my show is called The Wrestling Steve Show. Uh, I talk about modern and classic pro wrestling in a completely unbiased, unfiltered way. Be sure to check me out on all available podcasting platforms. That is the Wrestling Steve Show, and I am the host, Wrestling Steve. Just remember, uh, like like Confucius said, uh, man who goes through turnstile in Thailand uh, is going to Bangkok. Pro wrestling. Uh, so I got one more question, but before I ask it, how can people find Kerr? How can they buy music, subscribe to your pages, follow you guys, contact you if need be for either, you know, just even to give a shout out to say, hey, I love you guys. When are you going to be in? Uh, well, we're Facebook always. Uh, yeah. We're on Facebook, uh, on Instagram under Kerr Trinity. You can find us there. You just want to listen to us. Uh, the EP's on Spotify, iTunes. I think it's on iTunes still, yeah. Yeah. You can buy the EP from iTunes as well. Uh, one and all, actually, you can, I think you can buy the EP from Amazon as well. Yeah. I think it's on Amazon. Um, you can listen to it. 
think it's on Reverb Nation still. Yeah, it's on Reverb. Uh, there's a couple, there's only like three songs on Reverb Nation. That was kind of fell off. And then, uh, YouTube has some stuff, but it has not been updated. No. At all, really. And is there any shout outs you want to give to anybody? Uh, just like to thank Satan. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say that. Shout out to my homie Satan. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just really anybody who supported us with, you know, at any of the shows or just came up and say hi, uh, find merch. That always helps. Yeah, man. Uh, subscribe to Spotify. That would, that helps uh, not a whole lot. Thanks, Spotify. But, uh, you know, really anybody that's been cool with us. Yeah, definitely. Right on. The final question I have, this is the morbid question. This is, everybody goes, dude, that's a inside the actor studio type question. Is this, if heaven or hell exists, what do you want to hear when you arrive wherever you think you're going? I think it would be really cool as soon as I walk through whatever gates it is that all of a sudden is Angel of Death. That scream. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. Or, you like, know, instead of the creaking of the gate, it's just... <laughs> just rising, screaming. <laughs> Welcome, you have won the game. <laughs> you win. Last. <laughs> 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 I want to hear the bars over there. So we got the scream of Angel of Death. Welcome, you have won the game, and the bar is over there. <laughs> That's awesome. So, <laughs> probably the best answers I've got on that so far. Uh, we always get the Slayer thing, though, which is so cool, because at least you left it open-ended to where it could be heaven or hell. Yeah, I mean, either way. <laughs> either way, it's awesome, right? Yeah. yeah we know Hanneman's still shredding wherever he's at, man. Oh, fuck. Shouts out to Jeff there. So, Guys, I appreciate you all so much. Thank you yeah, all for well, coming for on having- the show. Keep on what you do because it's fucking awesome. And off of the EP, what do you guys want to have me play? Uh, you can play Hill, Hill of Martyrs. Hill of Martyrs. Well, here it is. This is Hill of Martyrs.
Since 1973, Tattoo Charlie's has been an established body modification studio in Kentucky. Featuring world-renowned artists and piercers, currently with locations on Preston Highway and in Lexington. A staple point in the tattoo community. Learn more at TattooCharlie's.com. Set up your appointment today at 7904 Preston Highway. Our tattoos are done while you wait. Hey, are you all in a band? Do you need merch for shows? By now I'm sure you've seen all the Metal Forge patches that are available, along with many more. Well, the printer I use for those is UKR Patcher. Check them out on Facebook and Etsy. They do awesome custom work and for extremely affordable prices for any band budget. Check them out at UKR Patcher on Facebook and Etsy. Musicians rejoice. Confused with all the modern and technical pedal board selections? Look no further. Kentucky Hot Brown Pedal Boards offer their homemade wooden and custom pedal boards for guitarists and bassists alike. Established in 2013, KYHBPB has helped support not only the local Louisville scene, but a large array of big and small players from across the entire country. More info can be found at KentuckyPedalBoards.com. 